Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Barry Bowling. I'm a degree Georgia Tech engineer. My background is radio frequency electro uh, electronics and analog electronics. So I've, I've been doing electronics uh, and, and design and test for over 25 years. So I'll be real quick on the agenda. We're going to do basic operation here. Uh, but when we come to a hands-on, I'll move my hand very, very slowly, and I'll point to a button for a very long time before I press it. So basic operation. I'm not going to go into the detail of the agenda here. Obviously, there's a lot of points here we will cover. And then section two is a little bit more advanced. We're just going to talk about cursors triggering a little bit, some very special triggers, uh, especially in the power uh, production industry, such as wave window trigger if you're trying to capture defects in uh, in your sine wave, and how to save a file. And then we'll touch also briefly on several features that are unique to this scope. The software, which is XViewer. OK, so let's dig into DL850 basics and uh, hopefully get through our first exercise here as well. OK, so this is the front panel layout. In terms of the, the terminology I'll try to use today, this is a hard button. It's a tactile button you press with your finger. So I may say trigger mode. This is this is the trigger section down here. I may say press, uh, I may, for example, say press channel 1. And then the soft menu buttons are here. I often say, uh, describe the soft menu buttons. Uh, as a soft menu button, and then I may say number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I may say press channel five and hit soft menu button number six. Anyway, the DL850 has, of course, a fabulous big screen. You have a lot of control over that. You can display things how you want. Uh, you may have the, the printer up at the top. Uh, these are the channel buttons. And there's a few buttons down here like print. We'll go over those buttons too. So here's a little close up. Like I said, here's channel one, all the way through channel 16. Uh, here's the trigger area. There's just four buttons there. So you have trigger mode, position, which is left, right. And then you may have a manual trigger, which can be handy. You can press that button anytime you want to force a trigger. And then there's some advanced triggers there. We've got math, history, which is old acquisitions. I like to think of it as just previous, older acquisitions. We have a measure function. That's like volts RMS, peak to peak, and delay. And then here's the cursors. There's about four or five different kinds of cursors. Here's the zoom function. So you had the magnification and the position of the zoom window. Hopefully, I'll be able to do a, a good demonstration for you today. Okay, There's one very special button. If you uh, find that you are uh, experience fatigue of soft menus or multiple layers of menus, the DL850 offers a spreadsheet type approach. So you can sit in your office and set up each of these blocks in your spreadsheet. I like to do it this way. You can do it with the button right here. Plug in a USB keyboard and a USB mouse. And now you can do just kind of point and click and set all these parameters. You can also very quickly copy a channel to another channel. So if you have, say, six channels you want to set up the same, you can copy and paste in here. Copy and paste, just like an Excel spreadsheet. OK. So we have a modern interface. Much like uh, the Apple iPod, I have a set button, up arrow, left arrow, down arrow, right arrow. If you don't use an iPod, these take a little time to get acquainted with. Uh, I, I'm old school. I used to use Tektronix scopes and Agilent scopes before, uh, before my Yokogawa days. Everything had a knob back then. Historically, everything had a knob, but not anymore. Instruments have gone to soft menus. And this button here, or, or these buttons, and this knob, and the outer knob here, the shuttle and jog, 
or what we call them. Uh, these actually work very, very friendly, so please get acquainted with those. You'll use those a lot. I won't go into the other features here. There's channel setup. The most important button on the front display is start, stop. Occasionally, if you see an error message, you need to hit stop. There are some adjustments that cannot be made while the scope is running. Okay, we're modular. On the right side, you have ground, and you have probe power, four of those. And then these are modular. The B and C connector here, this is plastic, and that's the isolated channel. So be very careful with those connectors, uh, but that's what provides safety to the end user. And also, of course, we have specialized cables to be used with these. They, they are a universal fit. They work with brand, good brand name BNC connector cables. Okay, here's a quick table for modules. Know how much engineers love Excel spreadsheets. And uh, I prefer to put data in Excel sheet myself. We call this a cheat sheet. Anyway, there are 15 modules. All the modules have voltage input or temperature input, and they each are a little different. Either the either the the, the vertical resolution or the sample rate. Let's talk about sample rate for one second. If I have a one mega sample module, I may still adjust the chassis to 10 mega samples, and uh, I would be repeating samples for the one mega sample module. And if you ever have any questions about that, we can talk about it more in depth at another time. This high voltage RMS module, this module has its own internal clock and its own internal sample rate. So you can run it very slowly and the sample rate stays quite high. That is also true for the frequency module. Okay, on the other end of the instrument, the left side of the instrument, the most important switch there is on off switch. And here's where you can do the USB keyboard and mouse. You can connect a monitor here full time and leave it connected. That's always on video. That can be very convenient sometimes, especially if maybe you're doing training. You can connect this to a a, a projector and demonstrate exercises or other tests on a large screen monitor. And then here's where you can put a, a SD memory card. This is a special USB jack to connect to the computer if you want to use XViewer. These two USB are used for memory, mostly memory, but I also use a mouse and keyboard here. So you may ask your IT guy if he has spare USB mouse and USB keyboard. No driver required, just plug those in. Very important too is Ethernet interface. This can be the fastest way to move large data files. External clock. And then very uh, commonly used is trigger, trigger input or trigger output. These can be used to slave two instruments together. If you ever call and you need service, give me these numbers here, model number and serial number. Here's the fan. And the the the, the DL850 will transmit error code if you have damage to the fan there.